Special Effects Academy, and we're on the start okay, of the week, end of the year. Folks, if you're on and not speaking, which is you're not, please keep your phones. Sorry about that. Folks, this is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy. We're on the start of the weekend, end of the fiscal year session for March 29th of 2020. We'll go through a little bit of a revised agenda as we cover the uh, year's results, as well as our regular um, activities during this uh, start of the week. Uh, so we're going to be looking at prior week, uh, our currency strength meter, fundamental announcements, major pairs analysis, setups in progress, and a few words in conclusion. And results for the long term ledger. We are slightly down at the end of the year by about 10%. But on the positive side, the open trades that we're still carrying USD Swiss, USD JPY, and Kiwi dollar are in position, uh, actually exceeding that 10% drawdown. So we are in positive territory as we start the fiscal year. Unfortunately, that did not reflect in the end of year results. This is the long-term account, so that is uh, not completely unexpected. We're looking for much longer running trends than, um, than a year. We had quite a few trades over the year, in fact, about 31 of them, based on what I'm seeing here on the screen, but ultimately, we had a little bit more losers than as we ended the year. So again, this account is uh, really best seen on a uh, five-year timetable, which is uh, at least my opinion what we're tracking to. So uh, we will continue to uh, do pretty much what we've been doing with the long-term ledger. And especially in the uh, situation we're undergoing right now with the coronavirus and all the other global events happening, it looks like we're in for quite a nice bit of a trending ride, which is uh, precisely when this sort of account shine. So we'll be uh, more or less continuing um, the, the same uh, on this account as we've been doing for the past year. I will be doing a bit of adjusting overall on all three accounts, but this one is probably not going to suffer any significant changes. The intermediate term ledger ended above 100% quite nicely, so I'm pretty proud of the performance in the past year. Uh, to be honest, 100% in a year is um, pretty amazing. So uh, again, no complaints on that. And we do some open trades as the year ends, which are also in profit. The market did already open for the week. It's been open for about an hour. We've had a little bit of a retrace on some of the dollar pairs, but nothing uh, extensive. We're still carrying a uh, an open profit on these uh, trades that we carry over into the new fiscal year. I will be resetting the ledgers, so uh, we're going to be having the ledgers and uh, the old trades will be removed, and we'll only be carrying the trades that are currently open. Um, I'm still a little bit on the fence regarding the actual money balances in the accounts. And as you all know, all three accounts are real money accounts. Uh, we, we trade with real money. So if I win money, that's real money I'm winning. If I lose money, it's real money I'm losing. Normally at the beginning of the fifth year, I do reset the accounts to... 2,000 and um, for the short term and 5,000 each on the intermediate and long term. I'm on the fence right now. I might not do that this year. I might let the balance ride and start uh, teaching by example how compounding works. So I'll decide between uh, now and a little bit later, but right now I'm inclined to just let the balance ride. For one, I do not need that money at this point in time. And uh, of course, uh, if I double the money yet again, now it's compounding instead of being a straight arithmetic uh, function of growth. So that's where we're at right now, at least in my head. The uh, short-term ledger ended the week uh, very slightly up. We started the week uh, with a couple of uh, trades that went against us, uh, the Aussie cat and the Kiwi dollar. And then uh, we had four trades that pretty much uh, carried us back. Uh, recovered what had been lost in those two initial trades and made a very small amount of profit. So we ended the week uh, pretty much at break even, but I'm going to call it a profit anyway. And the uh, year itself uh, for the short term account ended with a gain of about 35%, not as high as I would have wished. 
um, but we did have a significant drawdown um, during the third quarter of the calendar year of uh, 2019, after which I rebalanced the account and reset some of the methods I was using. And we had a quite a good recovery. Again, we not only brought it back to the uh, initial $2,000 balance, but we exceeded by another 35%. So we'll be continuing with that approach for the new fiscal year. And as with all the accounts, are uh, hoping to do better as time goes by. So that our ledgers for we are when money begins today. Our intermediate term account exceeded 100% gains for the fiscal year, as we just saw, and those were realized gains. I'm not counting the open profit. The short term account ended the fiscal year at a little bit of 5% after that bumpy patch I just mentioned, which required me to re engineer what we're doing with the account. And this is going to be, I'm going to take this as a teaching moment. Um, trading is not always going to go in one direction, and we're going to make mistakes along the way. Uh, the important thing is that we will be detecting these mistakes, owning up to them, and fixing them uh, whenever uh, it's necessary. It's precisely what we do. Long count ended the year slightly underwater, as uh, we saw in the ledger, not by a large amount, and open profits aren't counted. If we did count the open profits, uh, we did make a profit for the year, but of course, we never count open profits until we do close the actual trades. And last but not least, our live event, which should have been happening at the end of April. Uh, we will be rescheduling, obviously, this uh, coronavirus. Thing has put eyebosh on my things. Even if I did hold the event, I doubt that anybody would actually show up given the current situation. So we will be rescheduling for a bit later in 2020 as um, as the situation um, clears itself up. And of course, I will be providing details on the website as soon as I know what's going on. Relative strength meter for the last 30 days and last uh, week, uh, as we can see, volatility remains quite high. On the monthly, not as high as before, we were in the 30s, so one of the most volatile weeks uh, dropped off that sliding window. It crossed into becoming the fifth week instead of the, uh, the fourth week, so the volatility is slightly down if you look at this. Uh, we can see that the clear loser was silver, which is inexplicable to me, so inexplicable that I bought uh, quite an astounding amount of silver last week, taking advantage of the fact that, as far as I'm concerned, it's uh, selling at bargain rates. Uh, gold had a much better month, uh, so gold did, um, did actually increase significantly. The Aussie, the CAD, um, were pretty much the overall losers for the month itself with the Swiss, the Euro, and the dollar being the winners. Uh, and again, this is looking at the monthly. And the pound, the yen, and the kiwi being pretty much uh, middle of the pack. If you look at the week, however, we can see that the dollar was the clear loser last week, and we took full advantage of this dollar drop. Not unexpected when the uh, central bank injects more than $6 trillion dollars into the economy. At the same time as we have jobless claims uh, for the last week exceeding 3 million, that does not give you a warm and fuzzy about the U.S. economy. So it was pretty much a given that the dollar was going to collapse. Why it hadn't collapsed before is, uh, again, beyond me. But when I saw those um, those financial metrics, the injection into the economy plus the um, the unemployment claims, I did immediately start shorting the dollar, and we picked up quite a nice uh, uptick, especially on the long-term account where I got in early on these movements. The Australian had a good week. Uh, the Canadian had a dismal one. The Swiss also didn't do too well. Uh, again, always accepting the dollar. All these um, currencies I'm mentioning did poorly in general but did beat the dollar. We can see that the dollar is far below them. Uh, the euro indeed was one of the biggest recoveries in the dollar in, um, in recent uh, trading history. The pound also did well against uh, everybody indeed, except the, um, the metals. The yen was a, um, a loser except against the dollar. And indeed the yen, and we're gonna see this on the charts, the yen is a very tricky currency to trade right now. 
Um, it did lose ground against everybody except the dollar. I'm, I'm not arguing that. But when we look at the charts, you will see that it did gain and then lost. So it was doing some pretty wild swings in the hundreds of pips uh, daily. Uh, which is not what you want to be trading because it's going in both directions. You're almost certain to be taken out at a loss. The Kiwi did a pretty good recovery against everybody except the pound and the Aussie. The dollar, of course, the clear loser for the week. The dollar completely collapsed last week. Silver did a uh, nice bit of a recovery. And, of course, gold continued uh, heading slightly higher, not deeply higher, but it did improve over the week. Volatility for the week came in at 14.69%. Not the highest we've seen in recent weeks, but certainly not too shabby. So we are seeing some great moving, movements in the market. And I think these are movements that will continue in weeks to come, so long as we are under the threat of the, um, of the coronavirus. New York seems to be the hardest hit city in the United States. Uh, some of the metrics coming out this week and were quite disturbing. They were saying that a person is dying of the coronavirus every 17 minutes. Um, that is, um, well, it's a metric. Statistics are, are numbers that, uh, that describe something and you can make them look scary or you can make them just be, well, metrics. Uh, this one, uh, they made it look pretty scary and, and it's achieving its purpose. So there is a bit of a panic as regards New York. There were talks of quarantining the entire city. Uh, most of the neighboring states are either banning New Yorkers from coming in, or in one case, Rhode Island, they're actually hunting New Yorkers down. Uh, they're going door to door to vacation homes and, and, and this sort of thing. The police are uh, trying to figure out where New Yorkers are, I don't know, call it hiding, and, um, and putting them under quarantine. So stuff is getting very, a little bit disturbing out there. Um, here in Pennsylvania, we haven't been too hard hit. Most of the counties around me are under stay-at-home orders, but they're really not orders. They're suggestions. There is nobody stopping you if you go out. Indeed, I've been going out pretty much every day. I have uh, business to take care of. I'm not meeting people, at least not in large groups, and um, I'm taking care of myself, but life goes on, you know, so I am going about my activities as normal. Um, and you can see people out and about. So there is no sort of lockdown or any enforcement, just a strong suggestion that people keep inside. And of course, all non-essential businesses have been ordered closed. That is the only real effect. Uh, restaurants are closed, bars are closed, um, uh, anything not deemed essential, which is medical and um, I guess infrastructure support, including the U.S. mail, everybody else has been ordered to close. Uh, this is not going to be fixed between now and tomorrow. It's not going to be fixed between now and next month. Indeed, probably May is the earliest we could see some relief from some of the actions that have been taken by local, state, and federal governments. This is not going to be conducive to any warm and fuzzy feeling about our economy or about the dollar. So I really don't see an upside to the dollar in any scenario coming out, except Quite possibly, if things get worse outside the U.S., then even though the dollar might not be in, in its most shining moment, the other currencies will be hit harder and the dollar will be, um, will be stronger simply in relative terms. It's not that the dollar is getting stronger, it's that everybody else is getting weaker. And that may turn the tide for the dollar. Other than that, I do not see any upside to the dollar right now. Our fundamental uh, calendar for the week really has only one major announcement coming out, and that is the non-farm payroll, the uh, labor report out of the U.S. coming out Friday at 8.30 a.m. This is going to be a key announcement simply because of what I mentioned before with the unemployment claims. There were more than 3 million last week. Uh, if this continues, then we're going to very likely um, have the first negative 
non-farm payroll coming out uh, in more than 10 years. And that's going to drive another nail into the, um, into the coffin that is the uh, U.S. economy right now. So this is one that we cannot miss. Uh, this non-farm payroll might see a strong movement in the dollar into weakness, depending how bad the number is and how bad the reaction of the market that number is going to be. Everything else, with the possible exception of the, um, the GDP coming out of Canada on Tuesday, are pretty much non-events. They, they don't tend to move the market much. I'm not planning on trading the GDP out of Canada. It's, it's month over month anyway, so it's just a difference between month, one month and another. But that could be a strong mover as well. So if anybody wants to trade that one live, then now you know. Uh, Tuesday. 8.30 a.m. for the GDP out of Canada, month over month. And with that, we're going to move into the charts, uh, starting with oil. Um, there is nothing good to be said about oil right now, other than it's probably at the lowest it's going to go. Prices at the pumps near me have dropped below $2 for the first time in, I'm going to say, a good 20 years, maybe 18 years since it's been at $1.90 something. Uh, it at one point went as high as $4. It's been trending at around $2.50 to $2.80, depending what week. It's now dropped pretty much a dollar, and it is all as a result of the collapsing oil price. This cannot last uh, for too long. Either production will cease or something else will happen, and the price will come back up. But right now, oil is at pretty much the lowest I think it's going to be for quite some time. It could go lower, of course. And I don't have a crystal ball, and even if I had one, I wouldn't trust it. But I think we are seeing a bottom of, um, of the oil price. In fact, in uh, other trading activities I do, I've already started going long on oil, expecting it to recover somewhere into the low 40s at the very least between now and the beginning of next year, January of 2021. So I've already started positioning myself for much longer term trades on things like oil, things like silver, things like gold, and I'll probably be adding uh, options on a few stocks that I think will, uh, will recover quicker than the rest of the market. But that's neither here nor there, but just sharing what I've been doing. Um, the currencies, I'm going to look at these charts because we always do normally for my start of the fiscal year. I go out to at least monthly charts to look at some of the longer running trends and start positioning ourselves for what may happen in the new 12 month period, which, uh, which is starting for me right now. I'm not gonna do it in this case. There's no point to it. The market is not reacting to technicals in any fashion. Support is not functioning as support. Resistance is not functioning as resistance. Everything is moving just based on whatever the current day's coronavirus fears are in regards to each different currency. So there's no point in doing a uh, technical analysis until we're out of the current situation. So I will at some point, but not just yet. Euro dollar, we can see that the, uh, that the euro dollar is, um, is going back up like there's no tomorrow. So dollar weakness across the board has made the euro dollar go up. We took quite a, um, a few pips out of this movement, and uh, I think we're still in it. Um, yes, we are in the intermediate, so we're still tracking it up as far as it's going to go. Uh, pound for same thing, quite a nice recovery. Totally unexpected. Had it not been for the coronavirus, there would be nothing positive to say about the pound. But worries about the dollar are now outweighing the, uh, the worries about the pound given Brexit and everything else. And this is staging a completely unexpected recovery, which again, we took full advantage of last week as well. And it could very well go much higher. Weakness. This is the only yen pair that is moving in a consistent fashion in a single direction. All the other ones we're going to look at are extremely bouncy, extremely hard to trade. This one, however, moved from the middle of last week to the end of, uh, of the week. It moved in a very consistent fashion down. And again, we're carrying, I think, about 200 pips of profit on a USDJPY trade on the long-term account. 
So that helped us uh, nicely balance out the books, even though we couldn't take advantage of it before um, before uh, my fiscal year ended. It's doing quite nicely. Now I could have gamed the system. I could have closed out those trades on Friday, taken the profit, shown that the account was profitable for the year, and then reopened it uh, this weekend. That's not what I do. I'm, I'm not trying to show that I'm always profitable or, or that every fiscal year is going to be the bomb. Um, I'm trading for real. So I trade the way I'm supposed to be trading. The metrics are a secondary thing, but uh, this is what the USDJPY is doing. USDJPY started the week out retracing. So as I said, the market already started. So I know that the USDCAD retraced somewhat back up. So we were almost about to be taken out of the trade we had open on the USDCAD at break even. Uh, because I had already moved the um, the stop loss to uh, to protect us, so indeed that trade might be closed by now. The market, but if it did close out, we're very likely going to go back into that trade very shortly. It's just uh, start of the week jitters more than any um, actual uh, improvement or or um, well, yeah, improvement on either the dollar or the cat. So nothing has changed. I would still expect this one to trend downward. Not as quickly as some of the others, but still, it is going to be looking for support at the very bottom of the chart. So if we do get taken out, I'll bring that trade. USD Swiss uh, moved significantly down a week. And uh, again, this is another one that we caught quite nicely. And uh, we're carrying profit on this one. It's uh, heading towards the bottom as the dollar completely collapsed. I think the uh, Swiss reacted to the dollar collapse sooner than some of the other currencies. And that's normal, given that the uh, Swiss is a safe haven currency. So people started moving their funds into Switzerland way before the rest of the market realized that the dollar was dropping. Aussie dollar also going against the U.S. dollar, not as um, as um, strongly as some of the other currencies. But again, the Aussie is also having its issues. But all of the dollar pairs, I would expect, be trending into dollar weakness. And we will be opening more and more trades against the dollar so long as this continues and uh, we can do it safely. So stay tuned for that. Kiwi dollar, thing, whatever I said about the Aussie dollar, just pretend I said Kiwi dollar and it's the same exact scenario. Aussie, I'm not really trading some of these. Uh, I'm going to call them, they're not really exotics, but they are the more exotic of the, uh, of the major pairs. So we have the CAD moving in both directions against the Canadian, and I am a trend follower and a trend lover. So when things are moving in both directions, I tend to stay out, and that is what we'll be doing with the Aussie CAD. Our uh, Euro Swiss, we still have a uh, our oldest open trade on on any account is a short on the Euro Swiss. It went significantly against us for most of the week. And then on Thursday, it started turning around. And while we did end Friday, we're carrying a negative on the Euro Swiss. It was a much smaller negative than, than earlier in the week. I'm not gonna be closing that one. As we can see, this is a trend going in only one direction. It's heading down. It does do a little bit of retraces here and there, but uh, I'm still committed to the downward direction and we'll see if that ends up fulfilling. If it does take us out, well, again, I don't pretend every trade to be a winner. I expect there to be losers along the way, but this one is still looking good. Euro pound, uh, the pound uh, gaining strength uh, against the euro quite dramatically, especially towards the uh, second half of the week. Um, at some point, I'm gonna be entering trades, writing this one back towards the bottom. Um, but I'm going to be waiting to see how the week begins. And here is what I meant about high volatility on the JPY and it moving hundreds of pips in both directions. Just look at that last candle. It dropped all to 18 at some point on Friday and then popped all the way back up into the 120s. That's more than a 200 pip move or at least 150 pip move. Looks like it dropped around to the 118.70. 
So at the very least, 150 pips and going in both directions, this is definitely not what you want to be looking at. And if you look at the earlier candles uh, towards the beginning of March, we can see that every single day it was going in both directions and doing rather dramatic swings. So this is something that I will try to avoid until it does pick a direction with more consistency and start moving. Euro Canadian, probably the uh, the quietest or one of the quietest pairs for the past week. Uh, it definitely did move, but really didn't break out of its range to any significant degree. So we're still waiting on a breakout on uh, the Euro Cad and indeed also the except possibly the uh, the USD Cad. Uh, Pound falling into um, yen weakness again for reasons unknown the uh, yen should be performing as a safe haven currency right now it's not like uh, the uk isn't being hard hit by the coronavirus uh, just as much as everybody else is so i would expect this one at some point to turn around so we'll be waiting for that up Opportunity. Unless it does breach resistance at the 135.50, I'm probably not going to be wanting to go in long. If it does breach that level, I'll start cautiously trading it up, but not until then. I'd much rather wait for the opportunity to trade it down. Um, another of those quiet pairs, um, it did move, but it, but it didn't break out in, in either direction. It pretty much traded. New Zealand is a currency. It, it has a currency pair. It has moved uh, as much as a thousand pips in one day. Um, obviously, there's a reason behind that. It was the uh, interest rate out of New Zealand, surprised interest rate decision coming out, uh, I think, a week ago, a week ago today or thereabouts. So it did have a reason to move that sharply. Carry when it pulls a thousand pips in both directions. The um, the week ended up uh, bearish. It did move down, and again, it moved down by quite a significant degree. But at the same time, it did intraday move up as well as down. So not the easiest pair to trade. Pound Canadian, another one that's going in the pound's favor for really no clear reason um so we'll be waiting for an opportunity to trade it back down which i'm sure is going to be coming at some point if it does continue going up there's still about 400 to 500 pips to be had there and we will probably go for them but it'll need a little bit more convincing than with other pairs and last but not least, our pound Swiss moving all the way back up to resistance. And yet another one that I think is going to favor us with a return to the bottom before all is said and done. So we'll be looking for those opportunities as we begin the week's trading. Setup Sweezy in progress. As I mentioned at the beginning of the call, there is no technical analysis that has any validity as long as we're in the situation we're in. We're in a black swan. It can't be called anything but a black swan. Normally, black swans are very short-lived events that move the market by thousands of pips in, in a second. Um, this is uh, one of the first long-running black swans I have seen. So this black swan will be under its wings for months to come. And that, at least right now, and I, I do play this week by week, right now there is nothing that is important to the market other than the coronavirus. So I'm going to leave this as a constant until I feel that uh, things are changing and other factors are coming into play. Same thing with fundamentals. There will be fundamentals that play a role. Um, the um, non-farm payroll on Friday is probably going to be a good example. But let's remember that the results of the non-farm payroll are going to be due to the coronavirus. So again, it all comes back to coronavirus, and that's how we will be playing the market until further notice. Um, words uh, to conclude here. Well, as I said, our fiscal year is over. A new one begins. I want to start off by thanking all of you for, uh, for being with us. Uh, your trust, your patronage, they are all appreciated. And as I said earlier in the call, trading successfully is not about being right. 
It really is about controlling risk. If you manage to control risk, even during the worst of times, you're not going to be losing much. And then after you've done that, then do not control your profits. If you have trades that are winning, let them run for as long as they're going to win. You will find that over time, not in a single day, you're going to have bad days, you're going to have bad weeks, you may have bad months. But over time, your gains are going to far exceed your losses simply because you are getting better and better at controlling risk. And that is exactly what we do here at the Academy. It's not about getting things right all the time. It's about recognizing that we cannot get it right. And, um, and uh, we're going to be constantly improving what we do. But more importantly, since we know we're going to be wrong, we are going to be controlling risk. So any time we're wrong, it's not a devastating event. As regards fiscal 2019, we made mistakes along the way, and we still made a bundle of profits. So the key thing is we did admit and corrected as many mistakes as we could, and we kept getting better, and that's what we'll be continuing to do. Thank you all again for being with us. Uh, my standard... Uh, slide here at the end. Uh, any ideas about getting the word out to more people uh, so that we can help more people? Again, I made some really good profits in the fiscal year. I'm not trying to drum up new customers. I'm trying to get more people to come in out of the cold and take advantage of what we're offering. Some of the uh, suggestions I received were already uh, putting them into um, we're executing on them. So again, thank you very much for everything you sent. But don't stop right now. If you have any idea, uh, I do I do uh, welcome them. Email any suggestions to me at any time or reach out to me. And that is going to be the end of our presentation for today. Do I have any comments or questions from anyone? Okay, folks, thank you very much. We will be sending out a summary and a recording very shortly. Happy New Year, folks. Have a good one.